I read a book once, um, it might surprise some of you to learn, um, and it was called King Solomon's Mines by uh, H. Ryder Haggard, H. H. Ryder Haggard or Haggard, depending on what you look like. Um, and one particular scene stood out for me in it, and it was the meeting of two principal characters. It's a long time since I read it, but I just remember the scene. So I've looked it up, and uh, the two characters were Sir Henry Curtis and Umbopa. And Sir Henry Curtis was an English guy who was really tall and athletic looking and proud looking. He had a beard and flowing hair and looked a bit like a Viking, sort of blonde flowing locks. And uh, when he's first described in the book, the guy says he might, he looks a bit like he could be wearing sort of chain mail or armor and you could picture him like with a big battle axe and so on. So he meets another guy called um Umbopa and they're in South Africa somewhere. And uh, Umbopa is another sort of kingly character, um, but he's an African. Um, now sort of in the context of the age with like uh, the, the racism, put it frankly, of like uh, of the British Empire, he, he's not the... He's not the blackest of Africans, that's the way they make they, they sort of ameliorate it for the, the taste, maybe. And they say, oh, he's a lighter colored uh, a guy. And that, uh, um, but he's also a, a, a man of proud bearing. He's, he's another kingly figure. He's tall and athletic, and, and they say he's like he's got great stature and so on. And uh, Umbop has met Henry Curtis earlier on in the book, and uh, he comes to find him because he wants to offer his services. And the, the meeting goes a, a bit like this. Now, this is um, when they see the two together, these two sort of uh, men amongst men, a third character who's called Good, he says that they make a grand pair, don't they? Uh, one as big as the other. And then Sir Henry says to Umbopa, um, I like your looks, Mr. Umbopa, and I will take you as my servant. And Umbopa evidently understood, for he answered in Zulu, it is well. And then with a glance, at the white man's stature and breadth. He said, we are men, thou and I. Um, so looking at that, um, you get an idea of the kind of people <laughs> that we think should be leading us because that's the sort of ideal types that they put in books, like you might follow into battle or you might follow on into an adventure around Africa or something like this. So these two guys, I've just got to get out of the way of the cyclists. Um, yeah, so these two guys give us a sense of who who um, we might, in our ideal world, like to be following. Um, but obviously, um, even given the racist sort of connotations or the sort of, you know, uh, cultural worldview of the time, in the book itself, he says, uh, this is Haggard again, he says, the author, he says, um, what is a gentleman? I've known natives who, who are gentlemen, and I have known mean whites <laughs> with lots of money fresh out of home too, who are not. Now, I don't know about you, but nobody wants to be a mean white, right? And looking, <laughs> and, and looking around, I mean, where would you find some of them? I mean, um, at, at the moment, um, we've got this whole pandemic business and I was thinking about who would I cast if I was gonna do the, I don't know, make a movie about a pandemic and sort of uh, malignant characters who might uh, in some way want to <laughs> cast the world's population into corporate, uh, work into the corporate workforce here into state servitude and maybe transfer wealth upwards and uh, what else might they want to do maybe force medicate people and confine them to their homes and restrict their freedoms um, so if I was going to cast a few mean whites in those roles now what would I be looking for well first of all you're going to need someone to do the paper for the uh, to say there's a pandemic or, and that lockdown is a good policy so you'd want some shifty academic some sly looking dog and you'd want to cast him in that role and then you might um, and he might not want to have a big part, so you might write him out of the thing. Just, um, just, just you know, a few months, a few maybe a few weeks into the into the, or a few, short way into the plot. So, <laughs> on some sort of um, maybe a romantic transgression, something like that, some indiscretion, so that he doesn't have to play a big role. But um, so we've got the pandemic, and it's a it's a big deal movie, and uh, that's coming out in the spring, and then in the in the autumn we might have you know. Uh, uh, and even, uh, one with even bigger special effects, you know, some sort of um, sequel, uh, which we, you know, it's going to ha have to have an impact in the second wave, isn't it? We could call it the second wave, that could be it. The, the, uh, the pandemic sequel, the second wave, coming out in the autumn. So we, we need some characters who can be in both. So then we're going to have to have world leaders. And the world leaders, like, we could get some, like, sort of... Um, tin pot, tousle head dictators to, to rule over the, you know, um, preside over some of the, uh, the, the the principal countries involved and they could be, um, you know, 
uh, they have to be sort of oafish enough that they can sort of maintain the love of the audience sufficiently so that people don't really uh, believe it that them to be too malicious. Um, they've got to be sort of like a, a wobbly faced wannabe warlords, you know, that sort of thing. Um, who else could we have in there? Oh yeah, we need a few creatures of the night. So we could wheel in a, for like little cameos, people like Henry Kissinger or the Tony Blair, Tony Blair Foundation, just to say, just to back up the main storylines of the plot. And um, uh, we need somebody else, who do we need? Oh yeah, another creature of the night. He can have a longer role, just to, you know, um, sort of like um, worm tonguing into the uh, ear of the uh, the president maybe. And uh, he can be sort of a, a Doctor evil -y kind, a doctor, or an evil doctor, just to, to make sure that everybody buys the whole program that we're going on. And uh, who else have we got in there? We've got like uh, the two world leaders, we've got the doctor, we've got the academic. Um, oh yeah, we need a friendly neighborhood um, philanthropist, that's it, whose wealth doubles when, uh, since, the, um, since the start of his foundation, who kind of in a sort of, uh, I, what can we say? An avuncular way introduces people to the idea that they're not allowed to leave their homes until uh, the vaccinations come through, which may never come because, in, as we know, a coronavirus, a vaccination for a coronavirus has never been invented. So there's my plot line, there's the thing, and I'm looking at it and thinking, who do we want to be led by? <laughs> I mean, no, now, this, in this era of the Haggard and the King Solomon's Mind book, there was a thing called um, phrenology where they used to think that you know, the shape of your head, so if you look like a European, you were super smart, and if you look like an African, you were super dumb. Um, but so, but that, that kind of uh, idea is obviously sort of a pseudoscience and it's fallen by the wayside, so you can't get sort of sucked into that in the modern day and just judge people like, like a judge, judge books by their cover them by what they look like. But um, these guys, at the same time, I think we all have a sort of heart mind and we can recognise nobility of spirit where we see it because sometimes you can get people whose face looks like it's made by a toddler with plasticine and yet they open their mouths to sing and they, 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 they sing like a bird and it kind of touches the, your, very, you know, your inner core or sometimes you get people who've been deformed by birth who perform some sort of like a physical... Um, Acts of, acts of physical prowess that you can scarcely believe and uh, you recognize in them in, in even in their sort of tortured frame or you know uh, broken or, or, or um how can i say uh, less than perfect appearance they 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 manifest a kind of nobility they manifest the best of the human spirit and what i'm asking here is not do what do they look like but do we think at any point that we're being led by people who manifest the best of the human spirit. Amen. Preach to you later.